Hello dear students. Welcome to the course of engineering thermodynamics. Myself Mihir Mistri, assistant professor from mechanical department of LJ Institute of Engineering and Technology. So today we are going to continue our session on exergy. In previous lecture of exergy we have already discussed what is exergy, what is the concept of exergy and for a heat supply what can be the exergy, right? So in order to recall let me give you a brief that exergy is what simple whatever amount of of maximum work you can extract from a system till it reaches to the state of thermodynamic equilibrium or till it reaches to the state of dead state that will be called as exergy exergy is the available energy maximum available energy okay and the remaining part which is not available for the heat to be converted that is known as unavailable energy okay so that was the concept in the previous lecture so today we are going to continue further so here today we are going to discuss about exergy destruction in heat transfer process that means what sir very simple students if uh, heat is generally transferred from a reservoir see generally in practical what will happen you will have one reservoir okay so in contact with the reservoir you will have one uh, system or through uh, which fluid will be flowing right so there will be contact between the reservoir and the system and this fluid will rotate and uh, will pass through the cycle okay or engine right so and then it will also be in contact with the sink okay so that is how the system will work okay now we this topic which we are talking about is about what is about if you have temperature difference between this source reservoir and the uh, fluid working fluid if you have temperature difference between this source reservoir and the working fluid then also your exergy will decrease okay the higher the temperature difference between these two the higher will be the exergy lost exergy loss means what sir that means you will not have available energy more you will have unavailable energy more if your temperature difference is high, I am talking about the temperature difference between the source that is reservoir and the working fluid which is in contact with the source continuously. Okay, students. So let us understand that. So in order to understand that, but the first we will start from this given diagram over here. So as you can see in the given diagram. Uh, temperature cycle is uh, drawn that is Carnot cycle so in this Carnot cycle heat is supplied at constant temperature heat is rejected at constant temperature so first of all we can write heat supply Q1 is equal to T1 delta S right same way heat rejected will be Q2 is equal to T0 delta S so available energy or exergy will be what T1 minus T0 into delta S right so that is very well known to us now we will take the case wherein we are operating a engine okay and in that engine a working fluid is constantly flowing in a cycle so this working fluid will be coming in contact with the reservoir and as soon as it will come in contact with the reservoir it will get or extract the heat from the reservoir so now the thing is ideally your reservoir is at temperature t1 this is the reservoir temperature and this is the temperature of the working fluid that is T1 dash. So here you can see that your temperature of the working fluid T1 dash is somewhat lower than the temperature of the reservoir that is T1. Okay. Now in order to transfer the same heat, same heat means what? Uh, ideally it is our aim that from reservoir T1 we are extracting Q1 amount of heat. Okay. So now that same heat if you want to be transferred into the working fluid then in the diagram of ts this t1 dash line will be somewhat higher length see the funda is very simple students q is equal to what q is equal to let me write it down q is equal to what you know that t into delta s right students t into delta s okay so now here our case have q1 right so in our case q1 is fixed q1 is fixed you cannot move this q1 that means at temperature t1 also you want to transfer q1 amount of heat and at temperature t1 dash also you want to transfer q1 amount of heat so that means 
इन फर्स्ट केस q1 वन इज इक्वल टू टी वन इंटू डेल्टा एस एंड इन सेकेंड केस यू हैव q1 वन इज इक्वल टू हाउ मच सिंपल टी वन डैश इंटू डेल्टा एस डैश नाउ अंडरस्टैंड दिस मैथमेटिकली दैट इफ यू वॉन्ट क्यू वन एस कॉन्स्टेंट देन इफ योर टी वन इज डिक्रीज देन ऑब्वियसली योर डेल्टा एस डैश हैव टू इंक्रीज then and then product of this two will be same as the product of this two i am repeating again we want to fix the value of q1 that is fixed that is 100 joule it supply you cannot change that okay but here the temperature t1 into delta s is there okay so product of this two is let us say 100 100 joule okay so that is uh, known to us now let me give you the idea let let us say the temperature over here is 20 t1 is 20 and delta s is 5 okay students so now the product will be 20 into 5 that will give me 100 joule right students 100 joules okay now what is happening that is this 20 temperature is the temperature this is just for example okay so 20 temperature is for temperature of the reservoir now the working fluid obviously you know that in real life the working fluid will have the less temperature because if you want to transfer the heat from source to the working fluid then you should have the temperature difference so this will be having some less temperature okay now if this temperature is less then what will happen now this temperature which is of working fluid is less temperature let us say this temperature is 10 okay so obviously this t1 dash is 10 so t1 dash is 10 which is lower than the temperature of t1 now if i want to make the product is equal to 100 then obviously this delta s dash has to increase right so that is why the delta s dash will be how much simple 10 so here you can see the delta s dash has increased from 5 to 10 and the t1 has decreased from 20 to 10 so sir why do you want to uh, why do you are explaining like this i am explaining like this because i want to convey that how these lines can lines are drawn see students how these lines are drawn see here the t1 line is smaller right the uh, the delta s line is smaller delta s difference is smaller at temperature t1 but corresponding to the t1 dash corresponding to the t1 dash the delta s dash is somewhat higher so sir why is it so the reason is this okay students i hope you are clear up to this point okay why these lines are drawn like this so now this is how the real life scenario will work right that is you will have source temperature somewhat higher than the working fluid temperature okay so due to that what will happen due to that if you will supply same heat then you will have this much extra entropy okay so now the consequence is very interesting let us understand that but before let me write it down over here q1 is equal to what t1 into delta s and that can also be written as t1 dash into delta s dash delta s dash is what students delta s dash is this whole square area okay students this whole green color square area consider it completely filled that will be called as delta s dash okay and and that will be called as t1 into delta s dash and uh, t1 delta s is what t1 delta s is this one see i will change the color to blue right this completely area consider it completely filled okay students so this blue color area will be t1 delta s okay so now both areas are such that they are having same value that is q1 okay so i hope you can appreciate that okay now let's move further so as we are discussing q2 so now q2 will be what 
see initially if the engine was operating ideally that means ideally means what ideally means uh, your working fluid is also at the same temperature of the source so then you don't have any other temperature t1 days that is ideal case so if your engine was to operate ideally then the heat rejection would be q2 is equal to t0 into delta s that is what sir that is this area see students q2 is equal to t0 into delta s that is nothing but this much area that i am highlighting right now with the blue color okay that i am highlighting right now with the blue color that is representing the heat rejection during the ideal process okay now if the process is not ideal and there is a difference between the working fluid and source temperature or reservoir temperature then what will happen now the heat rejection will be what now observe this is very interesting now the heat rejection is highlighted by green color see okay i hope you can appreciate and see that on the screen that i am highlighting right now the green color this whole shaded area in the green color that much will be the heat rejection in case of irreversible engine operating okay that is the real case okay the former one was reversible engine operating and the second one is irreversible engine operating so that means what sir that means you can easily appreciate students that when irreversible engine is there then your heat rejection will increase and if reversible engine is there then your heat rejection has decreased okay so that means this q2 dash which is region over here that is t0 delta s that is highlighted over here right now at this green color this q2 dash will be greater than q2 right so now that is why q2 dash is greater than q2 that means your xrg is destructed okay are you are you getting my point now you can appreciate because what was the xrg xrg is what xrg is nothing but the available energy available energy first in initially ideally the xrg or available energy was how much ideally the xrg or available energy was q1 students minus q2 okay keep attention keep focused okay q1 minus q2 that was the ideally the river for reversible cycle this much was the xrg but now if you have the temperature difference between the reservoir and the working fluid then your xrg will be how much your xrg will be q1 minus q2 dash okay so that means what here you can appreciate that this q2 dash is having higher value than q2 that means this xrg will be less so this is let us call it call it as w dash and let this call it as w so obviously this w pardon me obviously this w dash will be less than w so that means if you are transferring heat at finite temperature then your xrg will destruct it okay that is the meaning of this whole theory okay students so that much xrg is decreased that means xrg is destructed okay so now let me just remove all unnecessary terms so now this w dash is equal to what q1 minus q2 dash q1 is what q1 is t1 dash delta s dash minus t0 delta s dash you can take delta s dash as common so that is t1 dash minus t0 delta s right so obviously w dash is greater less than w i have already explained it to you so now how much xrg is reduced because of this heat transfer because of this thing how much xrg is reduced the xrg which is reduced is this much t0 into delta s dash minus delta s so where this xrg reduces is shown this xrg which is over here is highlighted by this shaded portion this shaded portion that much xrg is destructed that means ideally it was available for you to convert but you you have in real life you have done the finite temperature difference heat transfer that is why this much 
excess your energy is destroyed okay so that is a very uh, fine concept explained over here okay i hope you are clear up to this point so today we will keep up to this point thank you